Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to talk about how to use fuzzy matches in Power Query. So I've got a couple tables here. This one has my list of available values, so these are just different colors. So, you know, if I were to compare this to, let's say, data validation where you've got a list and you want someone to enter in one of these values. But on this other table, these are the actual values that someone let's say entered or, or people entered. And so I purposely included some spelling mistakes in here just to show you that, you know, you potentially run into issues with this because, you know, if you're just doing a straight lookup, if you want to merge these two tables together and, you know, find out what people selected, you'd run into issues because obviously we've got misspellings here. So they're not exact matches for what we have here. Now, typically, you know, if you just wanted to do a simple lookup in Power Query, you just do merge queries and just hit OK, and it's going to find the closest match. So we've got these entry values matching up to these available values, but you can see down here it says this selection matches 10 out of 20 rows from the first table. So I've left the default as a left outer join. I'm going to hit OK, and if I expand this out, you can see that obviously I've got some null values. So the ones that are spelled wrong aren't matching up correctly. So that's that's an issue. So what I can do is I'll X out this step, go back to my merge queries, hit the setting here so I can modify this. And I'm gonna use the option to use fuzzy matching to perform the merge. And now it says 20 out of 20 rows from the first table are match. So in this fuzzy matching option section, you can specify different rules. Like let's say you want to ignore the case. Uh, you want to match by combining text parts. So for instance, if a text is broken up in the, into multiple words, and so to, to combine it for the sake of trying to make it match, you could do something like that. A similarity threshold, and this is basically a minimum value of zero, causes all the values with any similarity to match, whereas a maximum of one will have an exact match. So the default is 0.8. So this just gives you an idea of well, it allows you to, to set the sensitivity basically for for how easy how easily you want the values to match. Now, the danger obviously is if you um, make it too easy, then you potentially have a lot of false positives, a lot of false matches, and then your data is not not all that good. So, if you leave all these by by default, it's still going to do the the best job that I can based on this. And if we hit OK. Now expand this out again. We'll see now that now, even with the spelling mistakes, we've got you know the right right values here. Green's misspelled still pulls the right value. So it does a pretty good job of correcting these values and getting getting the right matches with um, with the fuzzy search. So a really um, useful thing to do if you've got you know just simple spelling mistakes, but for the most part, you know let's say it's the same length, it's the same. Um, type of type of string but there are some instances where this isn't going to work and so i'm going to close and load this first get this into excel and i'm going to use another example to show you uh, a case where you might run into issues and for this example i'm going to use some i'm going to use names similarly spelled names so for example i'm going to copy a list here of values so it's like Kate, Catherine, Katrina, Jenny, Jessica, Jess, Jennifer. And I'm going to have a names list of just three possibilities here of Kate, Jennifer, and, and Jessica. All right. So now what I'm going to do is load these into, into Power Query as, as tables. And now when I do the fuzzy search, I'm going to run it into... Um, a bit of an issue here because, oops, because in this situation now, the names are fairly similar. I'm gonna delete these so I don't get an extra range from table range again, has headers. And so I'm gonna load this into Power Query and now you're gonna see that I'm gonna have an issue just because the names are, are fairly similar. So I'm gonna rename this so I've got names and this will be my name list okay so now one of the home options select merge queries and I'm going to select the names list 
So these names on a matchup to these on this on this list. So see right now I've only got three out of ten that are matching. Now let's say I select fuzzy matching. Now I'm up to only five out of ten. So let's see which ones it, it struggled to to match here. So I'm gonna open this up. And so we've got Catherine, Katrina, Catherine, Jenny, Jess. So you can see because because these names are are, si are more similar, there's more overlap. You know, Paraquery is not able to definitively group these based on based on the rules that I've set up here. So we can try to adjust this. Go to the fuzzy match options, and let's say we've got a similarity threshold of let's say zero point three. We're still at 5, 0 0.2, we're still at 5, 0 0.1. So it's still not really helping us a whole lot in the, in this case. And there could be situations where there simply isn't um, uh, en enough information for Power Query to be able to do that just because yeah, it, it's too easy to, whether it's, it's too much, the letters are too similar. And so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to create a, transformation table or translation table. So we've got from values and two values. So I'm going to copy these names, paste them into here, and then I'm going to list exactly what I want these to be. So these ones will be Kate. This one will be Jennifer. Jessica and this one will be Jennifer as well. So I've created a uh, created a table to sort of create these rules to say okay this should equal this. Now um, for some of these, you don't need to do, obviously, K, K and K, it's the, the same thing. But for the sake of having everything in there, I'm going to leave it at, as, as is. And then load this into Power Query as well. And once I do that, now I can use that table. All right, so I'm going to rename this and call this my translation table. And so if I go back to the names here, and I go to my merge queries step, there's going to be an option where I can specify a table that I want to use. So I've got a transformation table. So I call it a translation table, but that's basically what I'm doing here. So I'm going to use that, and now you can see it matches 10 out of 10 because now I've given Power Query that extra information to say, okay, this matches up to this. So now I'm going to expand this out. I'll have those matches that I identify. Now, if I have any new entries that match these, I don't I don't have to re-enter or or expand that table. If I have another entry for Katrina or, or Katie, it's gonna know that it's gonna map it to, to Kate because it has this this table here that already already creates these rules. So it's effectively using that lookup table to use that to determine what that should be. So if you if you got a situation where the fuzzy matches aren't working or perhaps aren't accurate enough or resulting in some uh, unintended results, one way to, to foolproof it is to create a table like this so you have all those different combinations and so that, that minimizes the chance that you're not going to get the result that you want. So that's how you can use fuzzy matches in Power Query. Again, it's, it's, it can be helpful if you've got simple spelling mistakes, uh, missing letters and things like that. But if you're working with a large data set, you may want to consider setting up a uh, translation table like this. So that way you can tell Power Query your list of rules as, as this matches to this, because the danger is, you know, if you, you kind of assume that Power Query is going to do it properly there's a chance that you may get some unexpected results because you know as you can see it, it can give you some null values it can potentially make some false matches so when in doubt and when you're using a large data set you may want to create a table like this to make it easy for power query uh, to know exactly what should be matching to what so hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching